everybody, this is Brian from Carving is Fun, and I'm excited about doing this little project. I've been wanting to do it for a while. Now, if you haven't heard about Beavercraft before, they're an excellent beginner whittling and wood carving tool company. I have a bunch of their tools. I really like them. They're very useful and very affordable. So in the box, you're going to find a how-to guide showing you each step, a beginner's whittling knife, some band-aids, 150 grit, 220 grit, and finishing sandpaper, a leather strop, a ruler, two sets of stencils to glue onto your wood blocks, two blocks of wood, stropping compound, finger tape, and beeswax. All right, so after getting everything out and cutting out my stencil and glued it to the block of wood, I'm just about ready to go. Um, you'll notice too, just so you're aware, the, the top portion view is a little bit longer than the block of wood, but this is fine because once we actually cut this out, this is gonna contour to the actual top of what we have here. So this is normal for it to be longer. Now, instead of using the knife and the the finger wrap that they supply. I already have a nice set of gloves that I'm not, so I'm not gonna use the finger wrap they use. And this knife handle is just a bit small for my hand. So I'm personally gonna use uh, this this one from their little Sloyd kit, which is the same exact blade, but um, it's just a different, different handle. It's a little bit bigger for my hand. So that's gonna fit a little bit better. So first things first, the way that this is, uh, this kit is designed is to cut out the bird in a two-dimensional fashion so we're going to be removing all this stuff up over here then here here and here all that is going to be removed um, but if you have like a scroll saw you might be able to cut that part out and make it go faster but if not like me uh, we're going to cut it out by hand i will admit this wood is a little bit harder than i'm used to using with my air dried basswood it's still doable but there are some sections in here that's pretty hard Man, this, this is actually a little bit harder than I thought it would be. I thought I could take off this entire section with just my knife, but this wood is a little bit hard. I'm, go I'm gonna cheat a little bit, I'll be right back. Cool. Now, if you're wondering what this is called, I think it's called the Rip Saw or something like that. This one's brand is called the Razor Saw. I, I don't know, I like it. They got a fine side and a coarse side, so nice cuts and coarse cuts. Very cool little thing. All right, so that should help speed things up significantly. By the way, guys, there's no need to be perfect here. Even though you have a stencil, you don't need it to be like perfection right on it. I mean, seriously, we're not machines or anything like that. If there's a little bit of variance or even a lot of bit of variance, don't worry about it. Uh, in the end, it's gonna be an entirely unique carving regardless of how it turns out. Don't forget to stretch out your hands every now and then, guys, especially if you're getting older. This one's a little bit more brutal than normal. All right, I think that's gonna be as flat as I'm gonna get it there. Start working on other parts of the body. You take it slow when you're doing this part up here. You're going across the grain at more of it, like a steeper angle, so it's harder to cut, because um, it's just, you're having to cut through every single fiber of the wood. This is definitely not a one sitting project with a single knife. I'll tell you that right now, especially with this wood. While I do find it enjoyable, my hand is really, really aching. That's what, this is also part of the reason why I spend a lot of time searching for just the right kind of wood, is I know what my hand can handle. All right, I think I'm gonna call that done for right now. All right, so now we're gonna try and glue this on. Notice this line right here needs to match it with that line, so. It's gonna be kind of like that. Stick it on there and let it dry. And let your hand rest at this point too, because I know I need it. I don't know if, what you guys are gonna be feeling, but whew, my hand is not doing so good. Lines are somewhat matching up, good enough for me. Now you can see here what we need to do, taper in here and taper in up here. And if any of you have doubts on Beavercraft knives, uh, I've done this so far with just the one Beavercraft knife, so it, it, it's a decent knife. All right, so for the most part, I have it pretty roughed out. Now we're gonna start smoothing it out and making it more bird-like. Keep in mind too that these birds can be as simple or as detailed as you want them to be. Uh, it's completely up to you. I'm gonna do mine a little bit more simple. All right, I kind of don't like how the back shape is here. I feel it looks like a manatee. I'm going to see if I can touch that up a little bit. All right, now before 
I sand it. I'm going to sharpen my knife a little bit more and do some finishing cuts on the on the wood here. Basically all I'm doing is I'm going to be doing a lot of very, very small cuts. And this is going to smooth it out before I take it to the sandpaper, which will hopefully just speed up the whole sanding process because there's less wood I have to sand off. You can already see a really cool pattern showing right here. I'm hoping that when I sand it down, it's going to look even better. I'm really excited about that. Doing these little finishing cuts are very, very tedious, but in the end it does help result in a better looking carving. Just take your time with it. It doesn't need to be quick or fast. All right, I said that's about ready for sanding. I'm going to go take a quick break and then have at it here. All right, now that I got it pretty much all carved out, it's time to start smoothing it out here. Uh, so the kit comes with three different sandpapers. Uh, this one is 150 grit. You can kind of see it there. Uh, the next one is 220 grit. You can barely see it the other line, but it is a much finer one. And then you got the sponge one for uh, finishing up your, your sand in there. So... We're going to start off with the 150 grit and go from there. And this is where you want to start off with because then it's going to get rid of most of the um, more jagged parts. All right, and then when you got uh, most, if not all, of your flat spots uh, taken care of, work down to your next grit sandpaper, uh, the 220 and further uh, refine it out. All right, and then work down to your sponge. This is gonna be your final sanding. All right, and then when you're done with that, go ahead and wipe down your piece of wood. Um, dry cloth will be fine, just to get off all the excess uh, dust on there before we apply the finish. At this point, you're going to have a pretty cool looking bird there. Um, like I know mine has a couple imperfections. I can see a little cut right there. But you know what? I don't care. It looks pretty good as it is. All right, now that's done, we're going to take our beeswax paste and apply a layer of it to our uh, bird here. And this will really bring out the, the color of the, the bird. Um, it's literally right... This is where the magic happens right here. It's kind of like a hard lotion, so you might have to like stick your finger in there and work it. You can heat it up if you want. Just take it and apply it generously onto your wood carving. And this is going to both seal the, um, the wood and also make the wood, a wood color pop really nicely. And then from here, go ahead and buff off the excess. Seems like I was saying, earlier in the video that this is going to be really cool and I am not disappointed. That is a cool pattern right there. Look at that. I am very happy with how that turned out. It may not look exactly like they have on the packaging, but you know what? It's my own bird and it is exactly what I want it to be. So quick word of note, this wax that's on it kind of smells a little chemically so I'm letting mine sit outside and let it let in all the smell dissipate uh, my garage kind of smells like the the funky beeswax paste now so um, I probably would just I would probably do this part outside cool and that's that that took me probably about I think it took me an hour and a half to carve it and then 30 minutes to finish it from sanding to applying the the beeswax probably would have taken me a heck of a lot longer if I didn't cut off those pieces of the saw. Um, that that probably saved me probably a good hour, two hours just on its own. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you have yourselves a good day.